Right, hi everyone, and welcome to Simply Soprano Sax Starters. My name is CJ. Let's go ahead and learn something. since I've recorded anything and that's for various reasons but without me giving you the story of my life we're here and we have here and now so let's jump right in one of the many ways of getting better at playing sax or picking things up very quickly is to learn skills but an even better way rather than learning scales skills drills is to actually learn songs as simple as the song might be what you'll find is the skills that you need to learn are embedded within the song. Now that's not to say don't practice skills. You still need to practice as a saxophonist. You need to practice your long tones. You need to practice your scales. For instance, your major scale is really important. Your pentatonic scale or your blues scale if you want to play jazz. A fair knowledge of all of these things is really important. But sometimes it's even more effective to actually learn a song that has some element of these skills within it. What you find is it's a lot more fun and you pick things up a lot quicker. You also don't run out of the steam and the acumen of learning how to play. Let's face it, practice times, rehearsal times, on some days you might feel really up to it, but let's face it, on other days you actually may not really feel like doing it for various reasons. But there's something about learning a song it gives you that gratification and that encouragement to keep pursuing your main goal of getting better at playing the saxophone. So one of the things we're going to do in the next couple of lessons is to learn a few really simple songs. Songs that you can pick up and play and with a little bit of practice it'll give you that encouragement which is exactly what you need but more importantly it will build your basic skills as a saxophone starter. So let's jump in. about 159 to about 160 beats per minute and although that might seem fast the notes and the spacing of the notes actually make it easy to play and the only notes that you need for this are G that's one of them you need C you also need D high D so you'd be pressing your octave key and you'd need E these are some of the keys that you need, okay? Let's do that again. And the first bit that we played was your sort of entry level, really easy to catch um, melody. So let's do that again. We can make things a little bit more uh, complex for those of you who are slightly more advanced. And for those of you who want it just the way it is, this is a perfect way to actually inculcate some of the skills that you've learned in playing the major scale and rhythm. So this helps your rhythm. It also helps some of your long tones. So let's pick up a few more um, skills as we play this. Okay, so we start with G. We go to A. And we go to B. So that's G, A, B, and then back to A, and then G. Okay. That's the first part done. Right, so the next bit, you start from C, okay, which is that one there. So that's C, D, and E. C, D, and E. Okay, 
So let's join the two together. One, two, three, go. Okay, now that's the layout of the song, that's just a general layout. How can we add a little bit of complexity to this for variation and just to make things that tiny little bit more interesting? Let's try and add a bit more colour for those of you who want something a little bit more advanced. Okay. okay. Okay, so with those tiny little movements, is what I'm playing a lot faster. Right, so all of a sudden you've added a bit more colour to the song, okay? And the only reason why it's any different is just because of those very, very tiny details that you've added. Now, how can we get better at actually adding those? Now, if you listen to most um, professional saxophonists, if you listen to saxophone jazz or instrumental music, you'll find that that's a common little... Um, skill that you'll hear a lot. So it's things like that, okay? Okay, and just by adding those and adding it at the right speed, it gives it so much more color, it gives it so much more beauty, and it gives it that intricacy that lifts it just ever so slightly above the notch of ordinariness. Okay. But we need the ordinariness. And believe it or not, here's a little tip before we go into today's tip. And the tip is, try and keep your saxophone playing clean and simple. Okay? Try and keep your saxophone playing clean and simple. Clean and simple is more appealing to the ear than complex and, you know, with tonal issues. So by clean, I mean, instead of squeaks, you have a... And there you have it. That's a clean bit of saxophone playing. And of course it can get even cleaner than that. But the cleaner it is, the more pleasant it is to whoever's listening. And then also, apart from playing clean, keep it simple. You know, rather than playing uh, or aiming at playing super quick, the best way to get super quick is actually to play slowly to a metronome. Right, so. So over there, 
To get that, I go slowly. And you play it in rhythm, slowly, and build it and build it until you get faster and more accurate. Be your own critical judge. And if you play something that you feel, that doesn't sound exactly as I want it to feel, you're the best judge of that. Go over and keep practicing until you achieve the sound that you aim at. Here's today's tip. Right, your saxophone costs money. When a saxophone falls down, like my one did, it's very, very easy to think when you pick it up, no matter how it fell, if it was a light fall, um, most of the time you actually think it's okay when it's a light fall, but no matter how much your saxophone falls, it's more than likely that it will go out of tune and out of proper play. So the mechanics of this, it relies on springs and it relies on how straight it is. When your saxophone falls, because particularly, I'm talking particularly about your soprano saxophone, because it's a straight instrument, when it falls, it's very likely to bend under the recoil. So when it falls, it goes boom, and it goes like that, or like that. A lot of people tend to think that if your saxophone is held safely in its case and it falls down, it's protected against this. But actually, this isn't the case as my trusted saxophone repairer once told me he said if your saxophone falls down within its case it is still very prone to damage so here's a precaution keep your saxophone constantly lying flat if you keep it in the vertical position make sure that there are things around it that guard it from falling down so if it should have a fall there's something to stop it from completely falling down you don't want your saxophone to fall down. Now when these things fall down, it will take a professional uh, repairer to either straighten it, fix the springs, whatever it is. And uh, here's one of the main things that causes or leads to saxophones falling down. When you put your saxophone in your case, do not forget to zip it up immediately. I'm gonna say that again. Do not forget to zip up your saxophone case or buckle it up however it is secured do not forget to do that immediately after playing when you put it in when you've cleaned it and everything you put it in do it immediately also when you're picking your saxophone case up just remember always check to make sure that it's zipped up or secured because this is one of the chief most ways that Musicians pick up their instrument and realize at the last minute as it falls, I forgot to zip it up and it falls down. It's usually a very bad fall. Right, once that's done, once it falls, it can cost you some real money to fix. So that's today's advice. That could cost you, that bit of advice I've just given you could cost you quite a small tidy fortune. Fixing these things costs a lot of money depending on the damage and servicing them can go up to almost half or even more of the value of the actual instrument. So a decent instrument like this can cost thousands of pounds, fixing it can cost you hundreds. Okay, I've heard bills of up to 700 pounds just to fix or service something like this. A deep service costs anything between 300 to about 700 pounds. They're not cheap instruments, so look after your instrument, clean it, and prevent it from falling. That's today's tip. Right, so I hope you've learned something. I hope um, I've actually imparted something to you. Practice this simple line as a saxophone starter. those of you who want to take it a little bit further and there you 
have it. Sweet, clean, simple. And that's actually a very nice riff. So next time, we are going to learn the next part of the song, because we're building. Remember, this is the whole essence. It's not about learning skills that help you to become a musical intellectual. I'm sure there's a place for that, and if that's your aim, of course go for it. But I'm talking about people who want to learn to play an instrument for the satisfaction of creating something that has never up to that moment been heard. Creativity is so much more powerful than learning by rote. Okay? Fabulous. That's all from me today, and I will see you in the next Simply Soprano Sax Starters edition really, really soon. But before I go, don't forget, please subscribe. <laughs> Press that button that says this helped you because I want to keep coming your way and that really encourages me to keep coming your way with good starter lessons, okay? The next lesson, as I said, is gonna be an even more exciting one. Take care, keep practicing, don't give up. See you later.